This is Sonia Wagner representing PCA families in one of our recordings that capture lived experience and best practice research based learning that assists kinship, permanent and adoptive parents and carers in supporting young people. PCA families has a zero tolerance of child abuse. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay respect to elders past and present and express our intention to move together to a place of justice and partnership. Today we are discussing kinship care with a village care approach and how to provide behaviour support. Mitch Bayliss is the Director of Complex Behaviour Change with over 30 years clinical experience as a site rural and metropolitan Melbourne. Rach is the Director of Resources and Support at CB Change and previously headed up St Luke's Anglicare and Bendigo, supporting adoptive, permanent and kinship carers with strengths-based, culturally sensitive. One of the only... Right, okay. ...care for a number of kids that weren't with the department that mm -hmm. came along through one of our children in particular. And mum had very, very serious mental health and the father was deceased. Right. And so one particular boy we had on and off for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so prior to that, we'd had a couple of kids come and stay. Same thing through there. My friends, we, not my friends, my children's friends. We made sure we connected with the family, let them know they were here. Mm -hmm. You can come and visit anytime you like. We had no rules about that because they were adolescents and we had mm -hmm. completely understood we weren't parenting. Yes. We were minding children yes. and we were making sure they were safe till they got older. Yes. Um, so, and that was pretty clear for us because mm -hmm. we that would be the only way to form a relationship would be not to try and be a parent. Mm -hmm. Even yes. though there were some times where you had to parent, in particular, that young boy <laughs> that stayed with us, he smelled bad, didn't he? Oh, did he? <laughs> he didn't know how to wash. <laughs> Mitch had to show him eventually, like, we can't do this. You actually need to, you can't have a shower and put the old clothes back on. You need to yes. actually change clothes. So yes. it's interesting. So that's how that led us to our children being very open about who was here and how we mm -hmm. did things and what went on. Yes. Um, we were very clear with our children because they were older from day one that um, immediately when a child walks in here, they will try to stake out a place. Right. And that as a family, we need to stay firm and be very clear with our communication between each other right. and that person that we get it, we know what yes. you're doing. Yes, so, yes. But without being rude or anything. And then yes. following that, we had um, one of my daughter's, uh, my daughter's partner's um, sister come and live with us right through the department which was the worst experience we ever had up until now right um, and that didn't last long she was extremely damaged and basically they were trying to find any place before residential care right but yes. she was a runner and she really had no idea what family was about but right um, anyway and then from there um we got into this situation mainly because um of COVID really yeah. and okay. nobody wanting to take on children yeah and um, a lady I worked with offered that if there was any babies who came up during this time, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't a friend of hers at the time, we just knew each other from work, mm -hmm. that her and her husband would be prepared to have a, a child because they knew in the foster care system that people just weren't taking on children. Yes. Anyway, at that time, I was setting up um, what they call the Section 18 at mm -hmm. Nurnda Aboriginal Corporation, and mm -hmm. I was aware of a young child. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of how it happened because they had nowhere for this child to go. Yes. And there were, the commitment around sharing support started from there. Right. Okay. And if it was going to happen, then yes. we'd all, we all committed wholeheartedly, didn't Absolutely. we? Yeah. yeah. Before right. we even met so, the baby. So you have this kind of village model that sits around the child. So can uh, you tell yes, us sort of how that works on a day-to-day -day basis? What sort of things do you all do? How do you kind of share and navigate that? Because I guess someone's got to make decisions and someone's, you know, supporting. Well, the primary care is the primary carer. Yes. So that is um, our friends now. And we slowly developed a relationship. I think because I was extremely lucky to understand the field, yes. we've been able to have conversations between us all of us yes that can be tricky but you have to remember at all points that the care that the primary carer is the primary carer mm -hmm. so it was being able to have those conversations and work together so we're very honest mm -hmm. but at the end of the day both the, that couple are the people who yes. have to take on full responsibility over how they want to parent a child yes so but they're very flexible I mean there's no big deal like they um they hate guns. They absolutely yes. hate them. Well, yes. we have guns everywhere here because I we live toy without guns. toy guns. Toy we guns, live without. Yeah. <laughs> we live you. without. 
our <laughs> eight-year-old grandson as well. Yes. And Nerf guns and everything. Nerf guns. Oh, and yes. It, yeah, it's super just, fun. <laughs> yeah. And so that's challenging for her, but she accepts okay. that she can't yes. rule everything. So we just talk about it. Yes. Um, but you've got to be prepared to get upset. You've got to be yeah. prepared to go, oh, and you've got to be prepared to sit on the sideline because yes. that's your job. And that's yes. the whole idea for this young man was to be able to have respite built in very early yes. so that if there was any issues or anything happens, he's extremely comfortable with yes. the families. You should yes. talk. I'll yeah. stop talking now. <laughs> and what about you, Mitch? What's your experience of all of that? I mean, I, I just to echo a little bit what Rach was saying, um, you've actually got to fall in love with the child. Okay. <laughs> and then Good point. you go through, you do. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's a process. Yes. And there's a certain point in the care where that actually is very clear. You are. Yes. And you yes. know it because it hurts you when they doesn't come this particular day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> because he's sick or, you know, the carers, primary carers make decisions that actually we're off to Melbourne this weekend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you don't, yeah. and you grieve. Yes. You feel it. Yes. You know, but that's also saying it's, it's, you're, it's kind of working. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. He's connected to us. Yes. He's formed some attachment to us. We've formed the bond. Yeah. And, um, and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's. I, I mean, I, I will admit, Rach is the uh, was the motivator. She was. Yes. She's been very set on um, being able to do to do this. Yes. And I'm. Because part of me, my next job is caring. Yes. I'm really, really devoted to it, and I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I think with all the experience I have, I'm hoping this will continue because mm. we have the time and space, and we have some really like we have our families definitely not perfect far from that but we mm. have raised some really socially conscious children who yes uh, and that's the other part you have to accept that your children might get hurt yes this, because that's happened in the past with other kids we've cared for yes so you have to accept so I agree wholeheartedly with we are way over the top there was this yes. funny moment when uh -huh. Mitch myself and the other carer so often how it works day to day is we keep in contact all the time mm -hmm. she needs an extra day she'll call me but generally we might have him overnight one one month one mm -hmm. night a month yes and then we will have him every Monday because she works yes and so we have him Monday and sometimes on a Sunday depending on what's going on or you know how yes. anything's happening it depends what and he goes away and Mitch and I sit there go do it or something now. <laughs> but it's, it's very flexible you know if they, if yeah. they need they, if they need the whole weekend yes then it's the whole whole weekend so yeah. it's, it's it's working that so it's way. like a real family isn't it you're stepping, oh, we are. stepping out when you need to so and i think and it's got to the point now like the other day this is how well adjusted and i was talking last night when um the male carer came to pick him up mm -hmm. i was talking about how we ran into him in town now and he used to be a bit confused not as who we are but am I going with you or he'd be defensive or yes. you know not want to go now he's hi how are you you know oh, smiles good. whatever we yes. can part no issues so he really understands now the transitioning and the coming and yes. going and because we were very worried about what we were doing as well because this yes. is a bit of a trial but it's no different a trial and my sister will kill me for saying this because she always goes why did you tell people that that when I had a young baby and I had to go out my sister breastfed for me yeah okay yes I had to go to things it's no different to me than living around the corner from her and yes. doing all the things we did together right yes yes and you also talked last time about you look for other ways to impact the situation like making meals yeah for I the bought him some shoes home. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. shoes. Or when she comes to pick him up, I might have a platter ready and he's fed for dinner. Yes. So so yes. we have some food and it's not her feeling like because she always feels guilty because I actually have younger children than her. But yes. Um and our house is very busy. But I'm always like I grew up with eight brothers and sisters. This is yes. not busy to me. This is just life. Yes. And do you think <laughs> that kind of providing those really broad social groups? is what helps, you know, you just mentioned that he's now, hi, how are you going? And he's, yeah. you know, yes. very social from the sounds of it. Yes. So yeah. is he's, that he's part a, of building that um, skill, I guess? So, Well, without saying too much, we're trying to mimic what would already be in his culture. Yes. And have all eyes on. Yes. And have a community that, people around him that are very close to him and yes. um, able to go to different people without 
you know, not, not stretching it to the point of being ridiculous, but mm -hmm. having a network of family. Mm -hmm. that are, we're not family, but we're becoming family for sure. Yes. We're very much all like family now, the way we operate, even, yes. even when we have a fight. Yes. <laughs> You know, like, so So for me, it's about trying to be very culturally connected to in the right way. Yes. And doing things that, that are purposeful for him. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think for me, I've certainly seen elements of, I mean, I think, you know, providing culturally appropriate care is really important, but I've also seen that um, in a child that I've cared for in his diet, it needed to be culturally appropriate and he excelled after he had yes. a culturally appropriate diet. So, um, so are there other things that you look at when you're talking about culture. Well, we bought her some things? shoes. I bought the wrong size. We share clothes like you wouldn't believe. Yes. Um, so sometimes I'll run out of a jumper or socks because I'm like, oh, they're all at themselves. <laughs> so some socks in particular, doesn't it seem to be? They go missing all the time. But yes. uh, yeah, we share the clothes very much so, and whatever else we have. That, yes. Um, but like. People in the community were so good, but we also had babies, mm -hmm. like our grandson's only eight, so we still had kept a lot of things, but we got given a pram, we got, you know, it, it, people offered whatever that we could have. In fact, it's like, no, don't need to mm. need. It's been the same. She's had so much stuff. Yes. So people are willing to support and want to. I just think that's the only way they know how in our society, in a whiter society. Yes. I think it's some different... Um, cultures would care just because it's a community a child of the culture I yes. suppose but yes. here I, I just find people are very curious but it's so easy to step forward that's the problem the yes. problem is it was too easy to do this oh yes. that was the story I was going to tell you the day when we realized how what loonies we were is Mitch <laughs> I and um, the mother was, and I call her the mother because she behaves like a psychological mother and I'm happy to do that. Yes. Um, and, and I'm not offended and I, if people are offended by that, then I think that's sad for her because mm -hmm. her and her partner work very hard mm. to ensure that this child has everything. Yes. So we're on the couch. We were talking about how brilliant he was yes. and how he's going to be the next prime minister and for sure <laughs> he's advanced in here, and here. And then I looked at my friend and I said, I think we sound like those nutty parents <laughs> that think their child is brilliant, you know, and that was the moment we were all sitting there laughing because it was just like, yeah, we do, don't we? We kill someone if they go anywhere near him. We're going to kill him. So it's but isn't no, that wonderful for him? Like, Oh, you know, yeah, but you know that that's there. Yes. You know, like what Mitch was saying, once that's yes. hit in. Yes. And the other thing we do as a community is we, not me as much as she does, she looks at what we have. And yes. looks at what we provide. Yes. And she tries to provide something different for her. Okay. Uh, so his experience, like we have a big trampoline and mm -hmm. he loves it. And she said, no, I think I'll leave that for the moment because this is where he loves it. And yes. this is really special for him. And I get what she means, keeping things a little bit different. Yes. Otherwise it all becomes the same. Yes. So she's very clear, like she's not going to have guns. And we yes. have, a, no, I won't say it out loud, will I? We'll be in trouble. I'm not allowed to have them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. That yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we have a few manly things that yes. get done here. Yes. And it's interesting because, I mean, like, right, okay. Knew, they'll go on a bushwalk and go and yeah. discover nuts and yes. all different sorts of things. We're, we would do that, but we're yes. also into other stuff as well. I would have thought that's appropriate to have a punching bag there. So <laughs> Now we have, a we have a knife throwing range. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you don't throw knives, though. No, we throw big nails. Yeah, we throw 12-inch nails. <laughs> you might need one of those dart boards, you know, the new ones that um, <laughs> have got the spongy kind of end on them. So Yeah, no, no, we, we, we prefer the hard deal thing. So, yeah. you know, I mean, so he's learning different skills in different families. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're all so different. So he's getting and, all that kind of regulation and connection yes, in different yes, ways, isn't he, yes. by really kind of quality attuned carers from the sound of it, a variety of carers. So... Um, so can you tell me maybe more about that? Because I know you've got a really strong background in, mm. in you know, when children come into your home and you kind of don't know who they are, but you've got to work out pretty quickly where they're at, you know, developmentally, well, we've had neurologically. Since... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're constantly, obviously, you're tuned in, you know the background and, and yes. you're looking and watching. 
But the um, I think the things there is it's the it's just the standards you you um, you really have to learn how to connect and regulate mm -hmm. the child, and that's that's the picking up the rocking, the padding, all those normal things. He was an infant, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, in that space, it's good structure, it's good routine, it's nice predictability, it's lots of engagement, lots of fun, lots of yes. play. You know, all the stuff that you would not normally do, and that's yes. that's kind of what we've been doing. Because we're so tuned in, you yes. know, you very quickly, you, you, we've had babies before. Yes. Um, you know, you watch and you know when to pick up, when to hold, when to, you know, let him explore, all that kind of thing. And I think um, that dance that, get, that, that that actually occurs yes. is is kind of the key to it. And and you just let the child grow and do what they need to do. And that's, he's yes. been so easy, this little mm -hmm. boy. Yes. Um, you know, and I think it's because of our experience. Yes. And we have we have an eight year old who was a seven year old who mm -hmm. is like the biggest soother you could ever have. If he walks yes. in the room, his little boy's like yeah. they're they're forming relationships like brothers. That's what we were yes. talking about on Sunday. Um, yes, that, and and it's good for him because he's got another ch young child around. Yes. yes, so they're forming. It's very interesting because our Atticus is a spoiled brat by mm -hmm. nature of living with five adults and over loving and caring <laughs> and just he, because he's living with adults you know he can tell yes. you what to do like he's equal yes. so you can't help that that's what happened but it's watching them learn to share watching yes. them play because he's on his own with with a lot of adults too yes. and you you automatically give in because there's no one else there you don't you're not even giving in you're just being yeah. present yeah, yeah correct whereas yeah. these these two that's interesting because Atticus can be a bit me, me, me. Yes. So so that's been good to watch as well because they're yes. like mates now. Yes. Yeah, so, absolutely. And mm -hmm. it sounds and like they get a lot of physical play, which would be really helpful, I would imagine, for their brain and their development. Well, for so, me, the whole thing is is I think children have lost the concept of just imagination and play. Okay. And I and I believe that just from watching my grandson and my own children that were, you know, we we're, we're very much outdoor people. So I, I spend hours outdoors. I love it. Mm -hmm. But he, nowadays you're co competing with machines that yes. for some reason seem more interesting than mm -hmm. the world. Mm. So it was very clear to me that purposefully him with Atticus will explore as much creative play as they can because mm -hmm. I think that that's the only time in the world you get before you go to school and they whip it out of you and make you do writing and your drawings change and your imagination changes and all that yes. has to happen. We get that. But yes. I think those early formative years, like my children, should be spent in imagination and exploring the world. So yeah. we, that's where our parenting is probably all similar. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You've all got that fundamental base. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. we Atticus has got a plastic from the op shop keyboard. Yes. And just one of those in her house. So mm -hmm. We loved it when she came over and we said, look, he's already got a computer. <laughs> so just sharing that sort of humour and difference and understanding yes. that we're all okay in it. Yes. And the food, you've got to eat together. Yes, yeah. You've got to look after each other. That's really important, not in out. He's got to see us as functioning people in a relationship. Yes, yes. So that's important. Um, yes. I think you also I mentioned last time some animal play. We've got stacks of animals. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have animals, but we have. He collects the eggs and does chooks. Yeah. Oh, That's great. part of his routine. He's got yeah. a little bucket. It's so only it feels a like bucket. he's contributing and bringing in the yeah, food. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. And we've yeah. got a dog and gets whipped by the tail. <laughs> We've got a big Dalmatian and it's yes. still, still, it's just. A Dalmatian, I don't know how to explain it. But, he, yeah, he's, he's not scared of dogs and having yes. that dog whack him in the face with his tail and he'll push <laughs> him away. We have two cats who he regularly tries to annoy and yes. he's going to get bitten. It's going to happen and scratched because yeah. he just he cannot help himself. He wants yes. to grab their face. Yes. So And we have a, what's called an Alexandrine parrot that flies around our house at night. Okay, yeah. So, um yeah, and we have wow, a budget. you are busy. We have guinea budget. pigs. We've got oh guinea my pigs. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we like animals. So, you know, a yes. lot of it's about being outside, wandering around, looking at that environment, you know, talking. Yes. Um, I, I just think that if I could encourage anyone, it's so hard to get people to understand how easy it is for one day yes. and how much pleasure we get back 
how yes. much absolute and total like imagine just being able to give and every yes. pleasure receptor in your body gets set off yes and then you say goodbye and they have yeah. to do all the hard work I yeah. don't yeah yeah <laughs> like they can't believe how trashed we let our house get and I'm like he's only here one day he can do what he likes <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> when he, so when he when he arrives um there's like an echo going around the house it's his name <laughs> yeah everyone goes you know I can't say it obviously if we but say yes. it we can cut it out we go <laughs> so you know and and each son like my daughter's always present um yes but each of my son have developed sons have developed ways of dealing with him and what they do one yes will take him out walk around the yard and talk and do all that and the other's very gentle with him and very whereas Levi would more throw him and you know yes play more active. Yes. the other one's very gentle very sweet so they've all got a different role in his life yeah. so they've all and got different levels of maybe eye contact and tone oh and, totally yeah. totally yeah. totally yeah. that he's immersed in a world and the thing is they're probably the only thing we don't do she takes him out a lot so mm-hmm. he goes and sees bands or but they recently went to the carols by candlelight and yes you know all that sort of stuff yes and we tend to keep him home yes so yeah. ours is more engaged with just us because yes yes one thing i've noticed is people's curiosity mm-hmm. is not always good yes yes and they talk in front of him as mm-hmm. if he's not even there yes and it's you see the good side and you see a very, very ugly side yes. of the community. Yeah. No. I, I, that's why I'm trying totally to totally relate to that. Predict, so. predict, that's why I try to be a little bit protective because yes. we've had some atrocious things said to us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And well, that's, it's hard, isn't it, when that, that gets said in front of well, racism, the child? What do you do in that instance? So. How do you um, I've that got down? myself in trouble with my family now. There's one portion not right. so happy because yeah. um I didn't like something that got said and mm. I'm not gonna back down and yes people should know better. Yes, yeah. So you have to call it out. And yeah. I think um for me racism is alive and well. I've worked mm-hmm. at Bendigo District Aboriginal Corporation and Nurnda. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's it's definitely yeah. racism is definitely there. Yeah, and absolutely. People well, I are guess happy if to we say keep talking about it, it might change it. So I think um, actions too, like yes. reconciliation is an incredibly powerful um, idea if mm-hmm. we were able to uh, actually work it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think there's elements where it's working very well, but otherwise I I, I don't see that at all. Yes. I yeah. see them and us. Yes. You know, and white people are still learning to respect. Yes. Yeah. They're not there yet. Yeah. So, um. I'm just thinking about how you got started with this kind of model. How would you recommend other people create this for themselves? I mean, do they go to friends and family around them and try and get constant kind of contact for a child that they might bring into their lives? How do you recommend others get started? All I know is we do it with our own families. Yes. We see our aunts, uncles, we do all that. We care out when we can. Not everyone does. We've become such a single family sort of society where you're fa- like, well, I don't even live near my family. So yes. um, I don't have that sort of connection. So mm. for me, it would be about, I personally, one of my things is if I was at a primary school now and I realised some child was in care, I'd probably offer help. Right, yes. I'd probably... Maybe go to the school and say, is there a child here that's being cared for? It's hard because foster yes. care, they're not going to do it. And kinship, it's not, it's, it's not in there that, like they say it, but they don't really probably look at family relationships and what is actually going to happen when you have yes. a child in care. Yes. That's, that's, and people are left on their own. I can tell mm-hmm. you now, when we had that young girl and mm-hmm. she was absconding and, you know, breaking things and all of mm-hmm. that, child protection didn't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was the police. Okay. Yes. So yeah. you know, if you can't even get that system to care, yes, <laughs> how, how how is that going to work? So yes. for me, it's got to be within your your, your local setting. Your okay. what you want to offer. I mean, I'm yes. sure there are so many people who want to offer things. They just don't know how. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, people don't, are happy to help when someone asks, yes. but it's hard for people to also ask. So. Um, yes because sometimes it can be seen as a weakness or you're not coping or you know those kind of things so um I I think me having an eye for noticing when something's wrong yes has helped 
Yes. I also think when children came here distressed mm -hmm. because of things that had happened, I didn't push them away. Mm, yes. So those adults, I have a very strong agenda around adolescence because I see how bad they're treated and mm -hmm. I see even it doesn't matter what school you go to, where you come from, any mm. adolescence with two or more together are seen as a threat. Yes. You know, and so for me it was really important if a child came here, an adolescent came here, I was going to listen to them. I don't care who's right and wrong. I don't yes. care. Yes. It's not my job to do that. My job was to make sure they were safe. Yes. Tell their parents where they were and say mm -hmm. they're able to stay mm -hmm. and we can sort it out because adolescence is a very bad time. We, Our adolescents have been crazy. So mm. I think for me it really started with being open. Okay. I think it's a really important point too because we've got different parenting approaches yeah. yes. and different pe people involved and it's very easy then to fall into a judgmental view yeah. yes. about how people should parent. Yes. It's something different, different to you and I, and I think that's that openness and the willingness to talk about it and accept yes. that there is difference. And difference yes. is actually good. It's, it's, yes. okay. it's okay. Yes, um, true. And hopefully that, um, did you watch that parenting show at all where they showed the different parenting styles recently? Hopefully that opens up people's eyes. To there's not one perfect no. approach. So <laughs> yeah. and it's, it's a lot about communication and talking. Yes. And, you know, it's a bit like us dancing around him as well mm. as a bigger mm -hmm. sis system always trying to stay in tune stay connected yes and tuning with each other as well as with him yes so that's you know and i and i think part of part of what you may be i mean i i think the big advantage he's had is that um uh, we're educated and understand how to foster secure attachment mm -hmm. and i think yes. that's a that's a really important point mm -hmm. um particularly he's you know it just worked with 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 him but it may not have Mm, you know yes. and, and I think that that idea of of um, understanding how you do that yes child and do that together yes you need to have security as a team yeah you yes. need to feel safe with each other yes in order to provide the safety that he requires so yes. um, and I think that's what they do really well mm -hmm. is they let us know um regularly how important it is for us to be in his life and yes. they they manage that as like the team leaders <laughs> right yes. yes so it's very important you know to keep connected and have that all there because <clears throat> yes it is different parenting it is different styles we're different yeah. people but like what Mitch said I, I'm not going to get into an argument about what's best and what's not because yes. that's not the point for, for this young man the point is is for him yes. to feel and grow and be loved and strong and in a community who care for him. So he's at the centre of, of all of our thinking. Yeah. Yes. Mo yeah. Motives. And the other point is that it's it's not a you know we're doing this for three months. Yes. You know we've we've, we've approached it with it's as long as it is because things yes. are uncertain. But um uh but it's for life. Yes. Yeah. You a know, lifetime commitment. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah. He's part of our fa family. It's the way we. Yes. Work. And yeah. it's something that happens over time naturally, of course. Mm. But um, but yeah, the the intention is is that we don't put a time limit on, on this. It's it is yes. what it is, and we'll do everything we can while we're here. Yes. And if yes. he's um with us, you know, in our lives forever, great. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are your top tips for creating secure attachment? Ah, top tips for me is being <laughs> totally attuned. Yep. And reading that, like learning that child, spending hours sitting there, whatever you've got to do yes. to yeah. learn the child. Because I'm, I did it with my own, which is just spending time holding them, talking, no matter yes. what age. Mitch has got this fantastic trick he does. Yes. That it's been used on a number of babies. I'll let him tell you about oh, yeah, it. Great. <laughs> and, strange, and stranger babies, like the lady next door. Um, yes. There, yes. Daughter-in-law came, couldn't get the baby to sleep. It's crying and screaming. It was probably about five months old. Yeah. So they came over here I, yes. just because she was so stressed. Yeah. This is Mitch's trick for attuning and it works really well. Wow, great. <laughs> What's your trick, Mitch? <laughs> um, well, well, really, um, the infants, This obviously as they get older, this is really yes. different. So we're talking about very young yes. children here. Um, you really have to tune into them and bring them into your rhythm. Yes. And regulate against 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 you. Yes. So what I do is that I, I have a uh, I have an interest in meditation. So this yes. is where some of this comes from. Mm -hmm. um, is that I, I get the child and you do the normal, you know, padding and 
rocking yes. and jiggling kind of thing. Yes. But what I do is I bring my breathing down. Yes. And I time it with theirs. Yeah. And then I uh, I use a visualization of as I breathe out, I'm mm -hmm. exchanging energy into mm -hmm. their body. And as I bring it, breathe in, mm -hmm. I'm bringing it back in. So we've mm -hmm. got this rhythm actually going here. Yes. It probably takes about one or two minutes. Yes. And the kids are settled. Yes. I, I did it a few years ago with um, someone else's child that came in, wouldn't settle. Yes. And I had the child asleep in about three minutes. Yes, so, he's so, very good at it. So good. That's what I call congruence. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I think you're doing that in a really effective way from the sounds of it. So, and, and, and it works. For yeah. Me it's mentalization as well, which is sort of taking the inner world of the child. Yes. And then and, and responding on that, on that basis. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're kind of much. gradually bringing them down yeah, to a relaxed yeah, yeah, state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's right. As I once yeah. once I've got the relationship or the connection, yes, then I then I actually uh, I will bring myself down. Yes, I'll match them and then come back down. Yes, to where yeah. they need to be in that space. Yeah, and you it said about the top. Of, um, using a figure eight to kind of rock yeah. is what yeah. I would do. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think it's it's that it's that capacity to to attune. You yes. mentioned about secure attachment mm. really that's that's obviously you know circle security that idea mm -hmm. fitting in, into that that space um and i i do think it is is really about providing you know that that safe base when they're just mm -hmm. they're just they're distressed yeah. and the opportunity to support their ex their you know their ability to explore and be yeah. part, part, part yes. of the world yes. and that's a lot about being tuned in yes. a lot of this is about being really tuned into where the child's at and what yes. they need Yes. And, you know, and, and the kids problem solve like yesterday, he doesn't have, um, he has, uh, he's beginning to form language, the little boy. Yes. And, but he doesn't really have it, but he's come in. I've, he's seen me, he connects with me immediately. Yes. And uh, they've been outside for a little while um, playing. Yes. And uh, he's pointing at the table. Mm -hmm. And what's, what's this about? He's getting upset. So I'm trying to figure out what is it. Is this this, you know, trying to yes, problem solve? Yes. It's a different type of problem solving to regulating a very small child that's crying. Yes. Now he's communicating. It's the same idea here. Yes. And and we, I keep going to the table and eventually it means it's this little cup he wants. He loves the little brown cup. cup. So I said, yes. oh, he wants, wants a little cup. Yes. I, actually, do you want a drink? Yes. So yes. I went and got the drink and, and I said to him, do you, do, you want a, do you want a drink? And he goes... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got it. Hey, you know, okay, I'm the dummy here. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> but um, we had a couple couple of drinks. But it's yes. it's that it's that kind of you know it's a different type of problem solving. But it's that yeah. same thing that is is forming for him. Yes, he's stressed. I'm regulating him again. Yeah, and you're tuned, and, and you're not giving up, and you're and it's that repeat, yeah. repeat, 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 repeat pattern. Yes, of yes. this it starts starts to do that because your child's got to be in relationship with you. Yes. And obviously, you can't always be, and particularly as they get a bit older, mm -hmm. it's more so. Mm -hmm. They want something, they can't have it. So we, mm -hmm. now we have a rupture. Mm -hmm. So it's always doing that rupture repair, that rupture repair. Again, it's, to me, it's mm -hmm. like that dance mm -hmm. that, that you're doing where you're bringing your out of relationship back into relationship, out of relationship yes. back in, in, into relationship. Yes. So that's um, that to me, and with the child gradually exploring, taking risks, you know, yes. becoming more resilient through, yes. you know, not wrapping them in cotton wool, but allowing, you know, yes. uh, a child to have their opportunity for, for risk. Yes. Um, is what builds that secure attachment and develops a, um, you know, a child that can regulate themselves over time. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I guess when you're talking about risk, I mean, you're also talking about being available. So when yeah. something goes wrong, you're not just, up. Oh, see yeah. you later. Yeah, secure base. <laughs> something happens, yeah, yeah you base. come back. Yeah. Safe hands, secure base. So yeah. I just think, yeah, for me, it is, and I'm very, the way I probably react sometimes is quite intuitive and then I'll think mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. But um, it is being present and mm -hmm. having that absolute unique opportunity to do exactly what just Mitch said, be a part of their development in whatever mm -hmm. way you can. But mm -hmm. you cannot do it if you're busy worrying about the washing and you cannot do it if you're busy worrying about this. Yes. So that's why this community idea of kinship connection works because if she has something coming up and she's busy, Yes. Why would you be disengaged with the child just to get that done when she can call me and say, yes. blah, blah, this is what's happening? And we go, yeah, sure, fine. Yes. You know, she has birthdays, she has 50ths, she has 
all those normal things that we do yes. that sometimes if they are your child, that is different in terms of biological and that is the network. Yes. But if it's not, you're mindful about what you're doing. Yes, true. So, yeah. um, And you need to be because mm-hmm. they did not come because the family was okay. Yes. And that yes. never goes and that will always be there mm-hmm. and that needs to be paramount in your thinking as well. Mm. Because if you, someone like this young chap who's just adorable and mm. we probably got bloody rose-coloured glasses yeah, on. Cool. We know that. <laughs> but um, he's absolutely adorable, needs yes. that presence of mind because yes. there was no presence of mind for at least the first <laughs> nine, nine months. months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You so, know, and I know that. So mm. there's a long way to go with mm-hmm. him in mm. keeping that in mind as well. But yes. I'm just present. Whatever she needs, if she calls, yeah. we do it. And if right. it's not convenient, which is rarely is because we're so boring, we don't do much. So it's it's easy to accommodate. And yeah. and she's a her and her partner, and their family, the kids, they're amazing. Yes. Like yeah. we're yeah. lucky to be a part of it. That's yes. what I want people to understand. You get more out of it than you give. Oh, for sure. Yes. But it's hard to. I mean, if I could spruik it, if the government paid you to go around to every school <laughs> and go to every doctor <laughs> surgery and any, we would do that because yes. I've done it more than once and the kids have come and gone or yes. stayed in contact, one or yeah. the other. That's yeah. their choice. Yes. Um, and um, it works just to be yeah. there. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think what Rach was, was indicating then too mm-hmm. was the fact that the... Um, the, the secure attachment is also that security in the relationships, really what you're doing is you're fostering yes. secure attachments between the adults. Yes. Yeah. And I like I, I really like that idea of, of everything. Um, in some ways, uh, it's all attachment. Yes. It's all it's all connection, it's all relationship mm-hmm. going yes. on here. You know, yes. and that's and that's what he's being surrounded by yes. in that milieu of, of relational worlds. And because the beginning hasn't been great. Mm. You're actually always um, sensitive to providing uh, experiences that mm-hmm. are rich, yes, that are repairing, that are, yes. that are potentially healing here. You know, yes, the impact on neurobiology because of what what is what had happened to him. Mm-hmm. Ca- but it's also through. holding in mind those parents and not thinking and being negative anywhere, mm. space at all. You can have your own thoughts and feelings when he's not around. Okay, but I watch the carer; she is so supportive mm. over engaging us with because she is now wanting to do unsupervised contact Mm -hmm. and just get the department away in terms of make it as normal possible between her Mm -hmm. and the parent Mm -hmm. so she informs us and keeps us and is very positive about all that even Mm. though we know it's heartbreaking to think of what he went through yes and heartbreaking to think mum and dad can't have him Yes, I think, I think but yeah. we have to be that, and even if that's fake, even if that's you thinking and being compassionate on a level where it produces the empathy rather than you feel it, like yes. making you have those sorts of feelings, then do it. Mm. Yes, yeah, because it's too easy to judge. And you know what? Mm. What's mm. the point? Yes, yeah. that is his mum and dad. You can't yes. remove that. No, yes. and, I, and just to emphasize that, that that's having compassion and understanding is central. Mm, you know, yeah, you'd be able to hold him in heart, and also to to um, uh, have others around. Yes, um, like his fa- fa- family involved mm-hmm. um, over yeah. time, and find a way of making it all work. Mm. You've actually mm-hmm. got to have, you know, you've got to extend to them first. Mm. I think you know, mm-hmm. and um, and think about, and obviously not accepting things which may be abusive, but. Yes. But you're but you're um but you're open to making a relationship that will work. Yeah, and find and the good in people in bad yeah. situations. There's generally That's something right. good you can find. Well, it's right? a strength so, based approach. Yeah. Yes, strength based approach. Look for what's working, not for what's not working. Yes. You know, try and yes. find those moments because the only thing that's gonna be and I'll be honest, like when yes. I when I know that the because the, the family connections are slowly building now because the carer mm-hmm. is just <laughs> a power head when it comes to it being culturally okay and mm-hmm. so I don't know if you're allowed to put this in but going all around the side sometimes to ensure that people in the family do have mm-hmm. an opportunity with this young man mm-hmm. because that's possible I admit mm-hmm. the first feeling you have is oh, no you've run away 
But then you have to go, oh, don't be so ridiculous. Like, mm. you know, this is the so important. So you have that emotional feeling that yes. you then need to channel it in a way where, so yeah. we always get sent the photos. We share everything. Yes. So when he's here, she yes. has photos of him. When he's away with whoever, we yes. get photos back. We're all connected. And one yes. day that the maternal side know about what we do and yes. they're very happy with it yeah. and want it to continue. So I don't think there's been any contact with the paternal. That's why I'm saying mm-hmm. that. Yes. But with, they are very in agreement with everything that's going on and being yes. able to provide as much of a positive relationship for him mm-hmm. about everything. Look, yes. I have to say the care is astounding. Both of them are a number one when it comes to this. Yeah, great. And it's just about relationships. It's not about anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you've just got to, you know, you've obviously all put in the work and the time and the attention and, and that's you know, why you have such a good relationship all around. So um, so I could talk to you guys for hours, but I don't want to take up your whole day. So is there anything else that you feel it's important to discuss or or share today that we haven't I, I think covered? there is probably something about working with child protection mm-hmm. that people need to be clear it's a system yes. and it is very much like Centrelink or any yes. other government system. It is flawed because there's never enough money and Mm -hmm. it is flawed for all different reasons, Mm -hmm. but it is the only system we can go to and Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. I don't think it's easy and I don't think Mm -hmm. the carers had a great time with it as well, Mm -hmm. but it's about making sure that that is not central to your problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Make the department the issue. Yes. Make getting away from the department your issue. Right, okay. Go to permanent care as Mm -hmm. quick as you can. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Because no child should be raised attached to yes. Centrelink yes. or, you know what I mean? In a way. Yeah. Of sense of belonging. They need to yes, be secure think, who they are and where they're going. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing worse than hearing a child say at eight, my worker says, yes. why do you have a worker? Yes. Shouldn't her name be Julie or something? Yeah. And they so change really, over time. So we had children change, in foster change. care for 11 years. So, yeah. you know. Change. <laughs> Change. change. <laughs> and I really I really think that's important people understand that, that, that the department's not doing it to them. It is yes. a system. Yeah, and a remove system. yourself from that and use what you need to from it around yes. the legalities and anything else try to not worry about because you do your head in. Yes, great. And it's not and their fault. That's just a system. Yeah, absolutely. And Mitch, do you have any last comments as well? I listen, I just go back to the whole point about falling in love with a child. I think that's essential. Yep. That's what's sort of the key to this whole thing. Making yep. it, make it um, not just make it work in that sense, but for you to be willing to to do the extras. Yes. You know, and, and they, they cease to be a burden. Like yes. it's not, it's just delight. It's joy. Yes. It yes. enters our, our, our house every time he arrives. Yeah. And that's partly because of how we've approached it. Yeah. You know, it's like it's yep. that. You know, it's that yeah, whole... pure joy to see him and welcome That's him. That's right, so, yeah, because yeah. we missed him. Yes, you know, yeah. We haven't seen him for, you know, yeah. like our, our own children. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, love I, he I sounds like he's surrounded with. <laughs> I experienced hands-on when our daughter got pregnant at 18, the community's mm-hmm. ideas of that sort of okay, thing. Okay, yes, yeah. So of, of just anything that wasn't what people perceived as the norm. Yes. It, you know, we got asked blatant open questions about, things that were none of people's business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's the same when you're doing any care like this or anything and you're exposing yourself to something that's not the norm. Mm. You need to be prepared to do what Mitch says, put yourself out, not mm. really care what other people have to say. Mm. Because I said when all I used to say to people about um, my daughter's child was any child is welcome in our home and that's what you have to think will stop. Mm, yes. any child's welcome so that's how we feel about our home any yeah. child's welcome it doesn't matter about the disaster or chaos or anything that's going to happen <laughs> it's just what it is yes so, so there's an element of unconditionality yes yes the way you're giving yourself in this space yes and openness to others in a way that supports them to have that positive connection yes so, and people should do that with all children not not just oh, here like for sure yeah. Sure. And we sound like big saps, but we're not really. We're normal people and do stupid things. So. Yeah, but even the older ones, right? So yeah. they're still children. So, yeah. you know, yeah. everyone still needs to feel loved and accepted. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think it's a really good point that you make. So, And you 
you know, you obviously do it really, really well. So, so I'm going to welcome my children really well when they come home today because <laughs> I've learned oh, that. Do you know where mine you. comes from? My yes. father grew up in out-of-home care. He was in a oh, boy's home and then yes. in foster care. Yes. And his way he managed, I suppose, caring about people and vulnerability growing yes. up yes. was amazing. Yeah, yeah. But not everyone amazing. gets that opportunity to learn from someone that's really good at it, right? So... Well, just um, he was very open to difference. Yes. You know, yeah. and he, he never used to say, oh, you don't know what's going on in someone else's life. But he just used to say he, he was very generous with other yes. people and he brought people into our home and it was just yes. like, will you accept and be yes. kind? Yes, absolutely. And, you yeah. know, if you do that well, the model goes on. I've got two kids that are wanting to become psychologists because of that experience of growing up with other kids. So... Yeah. Or, or I've done something really wrong and they need to work, work it out. Either no, or, I think or once you time. <laughs> no, because our kids, we're very open about those conversations. They've told us yes. where we, they think we're fools and they've told us where they, um, like yes. that debate has to be part of their mm. life because yes. these people are part of their life. So yeah. you can't cut them out. Absolutely. They've fallen in love too. Yeah. And, that, <laughs> and I think, you know, they'll, they'll obviously realise now or later on the richness of their life because of what you've done. So I oh, know they love it. They, they're yeah. old enough now to reflect on having other children here yeah. and what that meant and yes. they, they were never put second ever yeah yeah so um, and the rewards are there for everybody so absolutely yeah, yeah. well thank you okay. so much for your time thank you. thanks <laughs> for finally getting onto it sorry about the mess <laughs> and um enjoy your summer break i hope you have a nice um nice break over the holidays we will. so <laughs> there'll be lots of swimming and silliness yeah. Yeah, you too yeah thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thanks